All right, so we're back to working on the S15 today. Um, today's video is gonna be pretty short, nothing too crazy. I did have planned to do the wheel rebuild in this video, but the lips and barrels are still not in, so I'm gonna save that for another video. Um, we're two weeks away from the garage suite event, so not much time. I'm cutting it close as always with every single build I do. But um, on today's episode, we're gonna be testing out the spacers. We're gonna install them, make sure that I have enough clearance. Um, now that I'm looking at it, let me tilt this so you guys can see. So right now, the wheels don't fit. They don't clear the um, rotors. So I ordered a 3 fourths of an inch spacer and as I said, now that I'm looking at it, I think it's gonna be a little too big, but better be safe than sorry. I can downsize that. Um, moving on to the interior, we're gonna be doing the, let me put the brightness up so you guys could see. We're gonna be doing the Willwood um, hidden handbrake setup. That's actually my deck lid cover right there, but uh, we're gonna be doing the Willwood handbrake install, the short shifter install, and the shift knob. I got the most Mishimoto shift knob. So pretty pretty short video today. Um, I don't know if you guys could tell, the audio and video quality is actually a lot better today. I'm using my main camera. I'm not using the vlog camera, which is this one. Um, and a new microphone setup since I know the audio on the past videos has been terrible. But let's get to working on the car. I'll check in with you guys right now that I'm moving that out. I'm gonna do like a time lapse because you guys know the time lapses look pretty cool. So. I'm gonna do a time lapse. Actually first, we're gonna start off with the um, spacer install, make sure everything fits. I did order new lug nuts since these were all old. Um, I went with the same style. I didn't do anything crazy for the lug nuts. They're actually loose right now, but um, I'm gonna get the camera down, do a time lapse so you guys can check that out. We'll make sure everything fits and we're good to go. Okay, now moving into the car, it's gonna be relatively simple to assemble this uh, center console area. Um, you do have to take off the shifter, the boot, the bezel that goes right here, and these two bolts right here. I'm not sure what's under here. I've actually never disassembled an AS15, but looks pretty simple, nothing too crazy. Um, cigarette lighter, or sorry, ashtray does have to come out. Yeah, there's no bolt under there. So yeah, this will be super easy. I just wanna make sure I don't lose anything that was here because it is all like random parts for the car. I took everything out of the glove box already. So should be, like I said, super easy, super simple. Uh, once the center console's out, I can install my short shifter and shift knob. And then I do have to cut this out for the uh, uh, master cylinder for the hydraulic e-brake, but that's not that big of a deal. Honestly, this, center console is kind of pointless. And I still have a glove box in case I need any more storage. But it's a drift car, you don't really need storage. Uh, as far as wheel setup goes, I am still waiting on a Vertex wheel. Um, I actually don't know when it's gonna ship, but Vertex wheel, hub, I don't know what hub I'm gonna do. I don't wanna do NRG because I don't really like it, but those seem to be what's in stock right now. So we're gonna do that. Oh. Also, I did order my gauges um, and gauge pods. So AM gauges, Street Faction gauge pods that are 3D printed. They shipped out super quick. They literally, I ordered them yesterday. They shipped them out today. AM gauges should be here within the next week. So everything's kind of moving along pretty quickly. Just only thing I'm missing is the wheels, which is like a very important part. But other than that, we're getting there. center console's out. Um, the little radio bezel is over here hanging. I didn't feel like removing all the clips that hold it in place. So I'm just gonna leave it right here. Um, I put the center console back here for now. I do have to cut out a little section of the carpet. I have to remove this bracket and get all the e-brake cable stuff out of the way. Get the e-brake removed, get this uh, 
lever, like the little plastic piece off it as well. And my e-brake actually doesn't really work. Like it had a button, but I don't, I don't know. Um, I do know that I have to get this little plastic piece off so I can do something. I actually don't know what I'm gonna do, but they ask you to remove it. So I'm just gonna follow their instructions. Uh, GK Tech has the video doing everything. So I'm gonna follow it to the T. I was gonna clean this center console right now that it's out, but it's pouring rain out there right now. I don't feel like being out there, but I did cut out the inside. I used the angle grinder, so the cuts aren't the prettiest, but hey, nobody's gonna see that because it's always gonna be closed. One thing that is concerning though, is that the only mounting points left on this center console are these two, because there was two in here, but because I cut it out, they're not there anymore. Um, I think on the S13 and 14, it has two on the side, so it holds it in place backwards. But if anything, I could just build a bracket to hold it down. It's not that big of a deal. Um, now moving on to the handbrake, I popped out the, uh, where did that thing go actually? Huh, oh, it's right here. Um, you have to drill this side out right here. So I drilled that out right there, got this out, and then the actual cable piece, oh, I should not have touched that, it's oily. But the cable piece, I'm gonna trim it a little bit later, not right now, once it's back in the car. All right, so I marked my uh, hidden handbrake bracket. The markings are horrible. <laughs> um, it's really hard to mark it like accurately, but I did that. I got the e-brake all set up. I cut out the center console. I think I showed that already. Um, I started removing a little bit of the e-brake cable, like, or sorry, the, I mean, shift knob, the shift boot. And I had to make sure over and over that I had enough clearance. I don't, I do have to cut the center console out just a little bit more. But other than that, I'm ready to start drilling these holes out. I'm gonna get my center punch out, center punch this, and then bolt it. Um, you know, GK Tech says you're supposed to bolt directly a metal, but I do have this uh, sound ending and this stuff's kind of a bitch to remove. So I'm just gonna bolt it to the sound ending. Hope it doesn't affect it too negatively. This cable does have to like, you know, it has to be moved. Um, I don't think S13s have this. I don't know what this is, but in the video he didn't have this. So I'm just gonna, you know, maneuver it around the bracketry. Other than that, everything is looking good. Um, other than the sound ending, yeah, everything looks good. I could try to remove this. I just, I don't wanna be chiseling away at this for the next like hour and a half or so, however long it takes to get this out. Okay, so everything is in. That took a lot longer than expected, but right now the hydro is actually staying, uh, essentially when you pull it up, it just stays there because there's no fluid in the system, so there's no pressure. But everything seems to be perfect. Um, I might have to make a few adjustments that I'm noticing like I might have to tighten up the cable and all that, but I'm gonna do everything once there's fluid in the system and everything's done. So now I'm gonna move on to installing the lines. Um, yeah, this was, it was a lot of work. I actually couldn't even use the hardware that they provided due to the fact that I have the sound ending here. Um, it just made it a little bit harder, but everything fit up perfectly fine. It just, the sound ending made it a little bit different. Um, I used my own hardware for the back two bolts and theirs for these. This hardware is fine because it is 10.9 grade, so everything should be good. But yeah, everything fits. Uh, glove box clears, everything's good. Now I'm gonna do the lines, and once I do the lines, I'll move on to the short shifter and shift knob install. Okay, so I just fished up the uh, bottom hydro line. So this is a banjo fitting, and then this is a gold fitting that Willwood supplies. So according to GK Tech, you don't need this, which I understand, you know, this thing's just kind of restricting it. So you put the banjo bolt up here and then it just goes straight down and back. Um, I do have to do a little bit of adjusting to get it to fit, but other than that, it should be pretty simple. You know, this whole thing is super easy to do since uh, your e-brake already runs into the car. I didn't have to drill a hole or anything. And everything's just there, ready to go. But let me get this on and then I'll check in with you guys at the bottom of the car. So you run this and then you run it to a T piece and then from the T piece to each rotor, or sorry, each caliper. Okay, so now underneath the car, we have this line. It's being fished in through the factory hole. That's all the way up there. I don't know if it's gonna show on camera, but it's being fat through the factory hole. Now I just have to make sure that I run this as high as I can. I'm gonna retain the stock uh, clips 
just so it doesn't accidentally touch the drive shaft while it's like, you know, spinning. And it should be fine. Um, if I do notice that it's a little too close to the drive shaft, I could just um, use the provided clips that they have right here. But I don't think I'm gonna have to use these. They don't even provide actually screws for these. So I would just use like fucking um, self-tapping bolts. But I have to get this T-piece mounted up. I'm probably just gonna actually drill this one into the car somewhere just to be safe. So this isn't like dangling because this does have a good amount of weight. But so I am unable to install the um, brake lines because I mean, the, these kits are like, you know, for the most part universal, but right now this brake line hits the coil. So that doesn't allow me to put the caliper back on because it's hitting right here. If you guys could see that, it hits right there. That's as far as it can go. Um, the only solution I can think of is getting a banjo fitting so get these brake lines remade with the banjo fitting instead of using these uh, gk tech ones i'll just have them custom made with the banjo which is going to take a little bit longer um i don't know how long it would take to get this done but i am going to remove one of these uh send it to a buddy of mine that does brake lines and see if he can get that done and if not then there's a place down the street that can make brake lines and hopefully one of them can get it done just because I do need this done as soon as possible. The break, like I said, the event is coming up in two weeks. So I am definitely cutting it close, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. What I'm gonna do right now is start getting this uh, short shifter and shift knob installed. And we're under the car right now. And as you guys can see, I have the uh, trans mount removed just so I can make enough space to get these two front bolts out since they're a little bit difficult. Um, now I have to get the two back ones out, which are also pretty difficult, but it's not that hard right now that the trans is lowered. It's actually super, super easy to get them out. Um, now the hard part is going to be hopping in the car with the car up on the lift right now, but, um, I'm going to hop in there, get those out and then get the new shifter in. So that shouldn't be too hard to get it in. Just the hard part is actually getting in the car with the lift up. Okay. So the old shifter is out. It's actually right here. So old one right there on the left, new one right here on the right. It's actually flipped backwards right now. But um, I actually thought that this shifter was gonna be in way worse condition than it is, like the bushing at the bottom. But that bushing actually looks really good. So I don't know why the shifts in this car felt so sloppy, but not too concerned. Um, there is a gasket here. I wish I didn't have to reuse this, but I don't have one. So I'm just gonna reuse it. Shouldn't be that bad. And honestly, the new shifter should have a really nice feeling because I was actually watching a Jimmy Oaks video and he has this one too. I didn't even know that I had bought it already and I was just watching a video of his and then saw him install this. So time to get that in. Sorry, I sound a little weird because a little exhausted and I'm in a very awkward position right now sitting down, but I'm gonna get this in. I'm gonna make sure I lock tight the bolts. Okay, so I ended up struggling a lot more than I thought I would it's actually really hard to get it centered in there. So I ended up, I'm not gonna pull this out anymore now that it's in, but I ended up pulling this out, separating the two, putting the plate in first, the base plate, and then the actual shift shifter assembly. Um, it's gonna be a little hard to assemble because there is a spring right here. So you need to compress this, put the Allen head bolt in, and then there's more Allens. Um, I'm gonna make sure I Loctite everything and get everything in back in exactly how it was torque to spec but yeah shifters in now i just have to um lower the car get the trans mount back on and then assemble everything back together and then i could put all the interior finally back together because this car looks pretty nasty without all the interior pieces so i finished getting the trans mounts under the car uh tied in three of the bolts there's only one missing right there i have to torque that one to spec make sure everything is good. And then I can throw all the assembly back, back on it, all of these little pieces right here. All right, so the center console is all put back together. Um, all that's really left now is to do the shift knob.
All right, so the shift knob is on, super easy install. I don't know if you guys caught that. At one point, the bottom part started spinning, which means I hadn't threaded it on all the way, but other than that, install went perfect. And it's just, it's beautiful, like the way it shifts now. First, second, third, fourth, wait. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then sixth. And reverse in this car is actually really hard to find. It's like all the way to the right and back but yeah, it's still a little tricky. Reverse has always been really, really hard to find in this car. I don't know why, but it's just kind of tricky. And fifth and sixth in this car have always been a little weird, but now they're just super fluid and notchy. So yeah, cube, short shifter, it's amazing. I'm gonna have so much fun with this car at the track. I can't wait to be out there just ripping on it. We installed the short shifter, got the hidden handbrake set up, mostly done. I just have to figure out the situation with the lines. But on the next video, I'm gonna be doing the Street Faction gauge pod install. So I'm gonna have my water temp, oil pressure, and AFR right here. And I'm also gonna be disassembling my Blitz 03s and my brake calipers to go get powder coated. So that wraps up today's video. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.